today we are driving to Eskilstuna, which is a town 30 something minutes away from Vesteros. And we're going to a special shopping center called Rituna. The reason why it's remarkable is that everything in there is either repaired, upcycled, or secondhand. We want to go there, number one, because we want to be more sustainable and eco-friendly. And secondly, because we've already spent far too much on our new flat, which we have to completely furnish as it's unfurnished and we're coming from England and we have nothing. So we're trying to save a little bit of money as well. I first heard about it through BBC documentary I think. I think it feeds into the whole Swedish attitude as well of like just trying to be more eco-friendly. They have a really really good recycling system in the country and they, uh, what did they, what was it, they export? We import garbage from Norway. Yeah, so they, they deal with other countries rubbish because they're so good at dealing with recycling. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to be part of that, that kind of culture. Um, I've always thought that in Ireland and the UK there's been a lack of effort when it comes to recycling and reusing. So it's an absolute miserable day, but we don't care because we're going shopping. Yay! <laughs> Hopefully we'll find some nice pieces to fill our very, very empty flat. What did we end up getting in Retuna? Unfortunately, we didn't end up getting a lot of uh, any big, more big ticket items, but we did get a lot of little bits. I really like these uh, little silver spoons. These are my, my favorites here. They have like a coat of arms, and there's one with like a moose, a dog, and an eagle, mm -hmm. and that's the, um, the weapon of uh, Jämtland. And there's some cute ones with some deers on them. I just wanted to co uh, to start a weird little teaspoon collection, so none of them match, but I quite like them. They were pretty cheap. Some um, some of them were 20 kroners, some of them were, the silver ones were 10, so that's yeah. like a euro, basically. But they were so cute, I liked them. Yeah, we polished them up. I think they look quite nice. Next, I got some of these little, these cute little individual pots, which I liked. They look like little Le Creuset pots, and they're ceramic to make uh, little puddings in I guess. They were um, 20 kroner each, pretty cheap again, so that's about two euro. And we have these cool plates. Yeah, just got some random plates because again I liked them and we don't have any plates at all yet. <laughs> so they're, we need... they're a bit extra. Yeah, else? we're going to have a weird um, motley selection of crockery for a while I think <laughs> before we get anything matching. And we got this huge like serving plate. Yeah, which again was pretty cheap. This was 60 kroner, so about six euro. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Probably a lot of cake. You picked out this candle holder. Yeah, again, I'm a sucker funny. for random like bits and uh, I'm going to try and not fill my home with uh, crap, but we're starting. So <laughs> here's a nice candle holder. Again, it was 20 kroner. I was like, I'm not going to leave that there. It's cute. Um, for mugs, we're gonna have like a weird mug collection. I don't think we're gonna have a big matching set. Just no. have a bunch of different ones. That's a nice mug. They were all, eh, this one was more expensive. This one was 40 kroner. This one was 20. The other one was 20 as well. And I got some beer glasses for my IPAs. Mm -hmm. They're the perfect size, also very cheap, 20 kroner. These are more sort of high bowl glasses, more everyday and good for drinks as well. And we have this as well. Yes, we got this decanter to, pre <laughs> to pretend that we're sophisticated when we pour our really crap uh, cheap wines <laughs> into it. So at least we can feel like we're fancy, even if it's shit wine. So um, decanter, that was 40 kroner. So again, four quid, not bad. And it looks quite fancy. 
And what I really liked as well, there was a guy who set up a big uh, bookshelf and uh, he just put out the sign you can swish, uh, which is the common payment here in Sweden. So you can swish any any books for 10 kroner. This is my, well, one of my favorite books. I read this when I was 16 and on a language exchange in France and I really identified with it because it's, uh, there's this guy in it who is, he's an English uh, pirate for lack of a better word. I mean, he's not a pirate, he's an explorer and he ends up in samurai era Japan and he can't speak to anyone and no one can speak to him. And at the time, as I was in this French boarding school, I couldn't speak to anyone either. And the only thing I could do was read this book and I really identified with this character. So I saw it there and said, Anders could get it. It is super, super long. It's a thousand plus pages and Anders is a very slow reader, but I was like, let's just stick this in the loo and you can read it until you die. <laughs> <laughs> And you got some cookbooks as well. Yeah, I got a cookbook. I was very pleased with this. It's only uh, 10 kroner. All the books were only 10 kroner. So um, I try to eat a couple of vegetarian meals a week, although I'm still a big meat eater, but I try to do the whole flexitarian thing. So I thought this would be a good start. And you got yet another book on Cloud Cocker. Yes, this is my second book on Cloud Cocker. To those of you who aren't Swedish, Cloud Cocker is one of the most popular cakes in Sweden. It's like a it's almost like a really sticky brownie kind of consistency. They're super easy to make. Um, this book has a load of variations of different types. So you can find Kladkok in basically every bakery in Sweden. And yeah, um, so easy to make. It's mm. called sticky mud cake in English, I think. Uh, another essential in every Swedish home is a shoe rack for your hall, because everybody has to take off their shoes when you come into a Swedish home. It's from the secondhand Ikea shop. And we got it for 149 kroner and it's usually double the price of that i think if you were to buy it new so pretty happy with that and then the final thing was i got this awesome armadillo top <laughs> which was 50 kroner so about yeah. five euro big armadillo fan I think. yeah i like armadillos <laughs> so that's my armadillo top um, oh no wait hold on there's one last thing so there was also this nice garden shop and they had everything you'd expect in a garden shop but also some nice little pieces and anders saw me looking at this cute little family of ducks um, there's four of them and I wasn't gonna get them and then Anders was like, oh, but you like them. If they make you happy, why don't you buy them? <laughs> don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Again, I think my father would just say, oh, so you got a bunch of dust collectors. And yeah, I did, but uh, they make me happy and I like them. So I'll find a nice spot for them in the new flat. So the big boys, they were 75 each. And then the little ones, they were 50 each. So that's it for the haul. We're a couple steps closer to finally furnishing our flat. We're moving in in a few days. So I think one of the things that was difficult about this trip was, although we've been in the new flat, we don't have any measurements yet. So it was kind of hard to visualize how bigger things would look, which is why we only got like little bits. So, but we have, yeah. our, we've got a sofa, we've got a chair now. We need to see how they look in the flat so we can get things like coffee tables, side mm -hmm. tables, things like that. I'm not a big flea market guy, but even I thought it was quite interesting to just walk around. It's quite cozy and going to all the shops. Yeah, and I liked how everything is in very good condition. It's mm -hmm. clear that there's a lot of love that went into the shop. You know, usually sometimes when you go to charity shops, you find a lot of like, objectively just crap. <laughs> I feel like they pick very good pieces for, for the shop. Um, all the furniture looked great, lots of different styles as well. So yeah, I think I will definitely go back once we have a better idea of how everything in our flat looks and how much space we have, because at the moment we were kind of just visualizing based off the two visits that we've made to it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please let us know with a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do, because we will be putting out more videos to do with how we're getting on with moving into our new flat. And then of course, videos about just the whole move to Sweden, how I'm settling in and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Until next time, see ya, bye. Bye.